Hey guys, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I hope so. Hopefully you can hear and see my screen now. I'm just catching up on chat. Y'all are having a whole conversation for a, the last hour. I know the time change is super difficult for the rest of the United States. But, ooh, I hope TikTok stays strong here and we're able to connect. We're streaming live on YouTube and on TikTok. Let's see. Y'all suggesting me move. <laughs> Ooh, what a feat with three sons and my mother just to find a house big enough for everybody. Ugh. Laureen, she's so sweet. She's been sitting here helping everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah, Discord has a lot of information in it, and you just got to scroll backwards. I mean, it's there. You can also do searches, too. Good evening, all. Anyone know about boot camps for the next few weeks? Yes, I do have a workshop coming up on the 19th. It's going to be on muscular skeletal, integumentary, and ENM. We're going to try to do 75 questions in that three hours. Keep in line with the same as what is expected of you during the C CPC or any certification exam. So we're going to try to get through 75 questions in those three hours. So that's coming up on the 19th. If you cannot attend, it's okay. You'll get replay for 90 days. When you do purchase the workshop, you'll get a link to join the workshop for that day. But that's also the same link for the replay. So no extra emails needed to go out. And it's only 12 bucks, not hundreds of dollars like some other people's. I'm sure they're very b beneficial and helpful, but they're super expensive. What? what oh, boy, y'all have been talking up a storm. Whoa. Travis, I had to lock the door, baby. I got to go live. Oh, sorry. sorry My kids are coming in and out. They're still not settled. They um, just went to the grocery store for me. <laughs> so they're bringing back all the stuff and showing me what they got. I, I know it's a mistake to send your children with your credit card and say here go to the grocery store for me y'all get what you want <laughs> but I'm at that point between my real job audit and teaching and everything else and the kids are home for spring break they needed to get out of the house I'm like just just go by go 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 to the grocery store for me <laughs> so all three boys went to the grocery store for me I'll look at the damage later <laughs> I had to prep for some questions for you guys Oh, gosh. I hope you guys can help me, hear me, and see me. I'm still trying to catch up with all this chat. All right. Doesn't recommend boot camps. You know, if they're free or cheap, reasonable, um, that's cool. But please don't spend hundreds of dollars on a boot camp because then a lot of times it's just really fast information talked at you and not <clears throat> rationalized where you can see it and visualize it. Um, if it's over one subject, like don't take a CPC boot camp over a weekend, like two sessions over every subject, that's really rough. But if it's just over E&M and they're only going to do one subject for maybe two or three or four sessions, then great. Don't do all in one. That's just too much information. Anyway, I got plenty of free workshops out there and YouTube videos that are super helpful. I'm getting ready to start. Oh yeah, that's me talking. Love the fact that you can watch 
these on your own time. Yep, yep, yep. Always learn something new. Yeah, I hope so. Oh no, commercials? I took off the thing so that you guys can skip through the commercials. So um, hopefully I've picked that option where you guys can just skip through the commercials. It's not a, there's a link that thingy that you can pick and it says you force them to watch the commercials and I make sure that's unchecked most of the time. Sometimes I forget. But they, they do give me that one option. So hopefully you guys can skip them. I'm not talking about anything important yet. And yes, we are having the March workshop. Yep, I'm going to go over e and I always go over e and every time I do something, anything. Oh, Lord. Twinkle. She missed it Friday. Aw. I forgot to send Twinkle some money today. It's been busy. Busy Monday. Love Muffin is going to go purchase something. I hope it helps. Yeah, you really got a really low score. I saw somebody who got like four 100s on their e CPC exam, but they got a 17 on their E&M. But then in their cases, which are normally E&M, they got like an 80. And they didn't pass by just a couple of points, like a 68 or something like that. So if E&M is your trouble spot, be sure and hang out. I've got some E&M questions coming up tonight. And let me see, where is my website? Let me go to this. Let me go here and see if you guys can see. There's the workshop that is going to be... So if you're at my website, you just go to Medical Coding by Jen. You go to the Tutoring and Workshops. It'll bring up this page. Just click on that date, the 19th, and then click the time. I don't know why it's saying nothing's available. I don't know how long I've been on here. I've got plenty, plenty of space available. There we go. And then click on the time, and you'll be just fine. And then you can hit next. Um... What else did I have on here that I was going to show you guys? I was just talking about something. What was in chat? I forgot what I was doing. Oh, yeah, that's the workshop. Yep, it's two, It's on a Sunday at 2 p.m. Arizona time zone. So that in Florida would be 5 p.m. start time. I think now that y'all switch times again. Good gracious. Huh. But in California and Nevada, you guys are the same time zone as me now. So we're all on the same time zone instead of y'all being an hour behind me. So that should be cool. Don't forget, I've got free book prep here. So you can always go to the CPT book prep page, which is usually totally free for you guys. Let me just log on real quick. I've been too long not being on the site. Come on. Go on. Log on. And then, um, yep, you can go here. You can click on any of these pictures. It'll give you instructions on what to do and how to make up notes and how to do your ICD-10. And then I have some guidelines here. Also, what's the... What's the deal about parent and child codes? I'll talk about a bunch. Some other helpful guidelines stuff that's super helpful. There's also the book prep videos for the digestive system for last year are right there. They're free. I got some blogs that are free. Um, and, of course, all the shared photos here, which are super helpful. A lot of people are asking, you know, how many questions are in each section. I have lots of photographs here. When do you go live? Those That stuff is here. Uh, just some of my favorite pictures. What highlighters do you get? What pens do you get? How do you carry them around the books? Uh, those vaccines we talked about and getting all those components down next to those CPT codes. 
those documents are here. How do I keep my book from unwinding? All kinds of stuff here. How do I get an extra hour for my exam? What kind of letter do I need to send in? I got examples of all that stuff. Just tons of stuff here for free. For that, I did have today, I thought we could do some book prep on the urinary system like I would do. And if I was going to do uh, book prep, I like to do the anatomy pictures in the CPT book, the ones right before each section. And all I do when I do this is I'll Google urinary system, what the name of the picture is, but then I'll Google functions. So if I was going to do this, whoops, let me get my fingers in the right spot. I can't see my fingers because I've got the microphone and videos all up in the way. Our urinary system functions. And then I hit enter and then I go to images. And this is what I like to do is I like to look for pictures that are super simple, easy, and maybe have one or two words listed. I don't want a whole paragraph next to whatever, but something that is tells me what does the main artery do? What does, I don't know, ureters do? What's the definition of the ureters? That kind of stuff. I like this one too. This is kind of cool because it tells you the functions. So that's probably one of the first things I would write <clears throat> on this document is what is the function of the urinary system. It's for excretion, maintaining balance as far as uh, acid base goes, secretes rest, uh, waste, and um, helpful in elimination. So then I would just go to my book here. And put in my functions. That's one. We can also go back to all and stop it I like the the little list that you can just copy paste that are super Easy. Easy to just transfer from one thing to another. We can also make other list. Didn't mean to change the color to red, but parts of kidneys so we list them all out because a lot of times they'll say which one of these is part of the kidneys except so then you just go through your list and see which one's not in one of the answers Oh, Lord. Try to read my handwriting. I feel bad for you guys. This year, though, a lot of them are being typed, so that'll help out. That kind of stuff. Super helpful. Also, today I have... Where is that document? 
this thing right here. Is that here? Where is that? There it is, but y'all can't see it too well on this one. Let me go here and see if I can't change it here. There we go. That's better. I hope TikTok's working. I only got five people on there, but it may be going in and out. Let's see. Hey, Caddy. Good to see you on there. And let me get up YouTube chat, see if I missed anything. You're still having trouble with the moss surgeries? Sure, I can go over those real quick. Uh, as soon as we finish this urinary thing. Yep, yep, yep. We can. If you didn't receive a email, Jada, then either your, your email address is wrong that you put into your account. Um, it's all automated, so you just have to make sure that you didn't mistype an email address. Jada, Jada, Jada versus Jada. I wonder what your name would have been for the purchase. So I can look you up and see exactly what email address you put in there to see which one it goes through. I did post a list of some email addresses in Discord today that bounced back that did not accept my email. Either it's the wrong email address or it's like a school's email address that won't allow other people to email you unless they're inside your school system. So using an EDU thing sometimes is an issue. So, if you have trouble um, and you didn't get an email, you need to email me on the purchase site where you purchased it. There's an email section either on Etsy or on my website and just email me and let me know. And I can research it and find out where your issue is. All right. What we've got here is the bladder anatomy right here. Where would the ureters be? We've only got one, two, three, four, five, six little slots available. So we can just number them one through six. Which one is the ureter spot on this one? Thank you for subscribing. Yep, I can go back to the parts of the kidneys as soon as I get done with this. Anybody know which ones? One, two, three, four, five, and six. I know this looks weird, but that's a bladder. The ureters empty down into the bladder. So these two tubular sec sections up here at the top, probably that's what that is. Probably. All right, the top of the bladder right here is that going to be the peri or the m muscle? This cream color layer at the top. Is it going to be peri or, I don't know how to say that, muscle? What do you think? It looks like an Amish hat almost. 
Very pleated like that. Yep, I can do tips. Perry means on top, so I would put that one there. The It looks like a giraffe skin tone around the bladder is definitely going to be our muscle, our internal urethra is going to be up here, and our external is going to be down here. And we have nothing to fill in for. This is probably um, some sort of openings to the ureters or, or ureter, something like that. But they don't have that option. All right. Let's go back to our listing of the parts. Get to it. There we go. And get to it down here. No, is that big enough for you guys to see? I can make it bigger. Got our R. Got our R. There we go. Parts of the kidney. Go. If you're handy dandy at drawing. One cool thing to draw in here is just so you can see. I'll have to label this, but this is your inferior vena cava right here, and then it goes down into the femoral legs, right? And then This one, if we go here, we're going to draw in our descending aorta. It's just because a lot of things have a lot to do with, you know, picturing all this stuff. And that can help out a little bit, I think, I in some of these codes. So the red, of course, is our descending aorta, assorta, or aorta, and then here. Our blue is our inferior vena cava. Of course, I won't leave them that big. We'll make these tiny. Inferior vena cava. And then descending aorta. So this is my first step in my CPT book prep. I know somebody asked. How do you do book prep? Well, this is the first thing you do. Go through your book. Well, I use this, I call this my coloring days. So it's days that I'm tired of looking at CPT codes and I don't want to do anything else to it. But I want to still look productive and I want to do something, but I want to do it mindlessly. So I copy from pictures and draw in what each thing does. Look at this one. I like this one. Kidneys produce urine. Love it. Then we can go label that. It's small. It's effective. Tells you what it does. You might think that you'll remember that, but 
sometimes you get brain freezes during a stressful event and that exam is super stressful. So even if you do know it, if you have the time before you take your exam, it's nice to write it down. Ureters, they transport urine towards the bladder. There we go. Our bladder temporarily stores it. And then our urethra transport the urine out of the body. Just writing those out underneath there, super helpful to get that done. Some other things I would write here is after I get through doing this, I would Google again urinary system prefixes. So find you a list of prefixes. Sometimes again, I still find those in images because it's easier. Look right here. That's simple enough. We got extra in, para, retro. I'll write those, put them on that page. I'll also do the suffixes and I'll also do the main root words. So just a small list of a few things and put that all here on this page. Super helpful. And then um, as you're going through your practice exam questions, you may find things that strike you as interesting, um, like the name of a particular instrument or a modifier that you often use in this area. You can write that information here too. UA system equals two kidneys in general. Two ureters, one bladder, and one U R E T H R A urethra. So now we've got a list of the system. We've got its function. And we have its parts listed. Next thing I like to do is, <clears throat> especially in urinary, I don't know if this is zoomed in enough for you guys, but I like to um, write at the top of the page what the CPT codes are dealing with because a lot of urinary is just Am I dealing with repairing a kidney? Am I repairing a bladder? Am I repairing a urethra? Am I repairing all of it at the same time? If you can write down at the top of each header, because there's two headers on each side, what you're doing with the codes that are underneath it, it's super helpful. So my next page will have renal pelvis. And then this side is kidney. And then this is kidney. And I put it in the middle because it's doing both, both sides probably. And then I'll figure out what this is. I haven't done all the notes yet. And so forth. You'll see that as you go through here, we're dealing with kidney and urethra right here. Looks like um, kidney. What page is this one? This one's the 505. 505 codes. We're into ureters, aren't we? Yep. When we get to 50592, next page, we're going to split it up where we leave the kidneys behind and we go straight to the ureters, which is helpful. And then we'll do several pages of ureter until we get to bladder, which is around the 5100s. See, and these will be bladder, but I'll go back and go write my ureter on the top of these pages so that it keeps me straight. By the end of the urinary chapter, I'll be doing a combo ones where I'm doing ureter and pelvis or ureter and bladder or end up in the prostate too. So 
just knowing what codes are on each page is super helpful. Be sure and get that marked at the top. As far as what do I highlight, my yellow highlight is always for what's in the parentheses. Yes, even if it's just one letter, I put that in a parentheses because a lot of times you don't know if we're dealing with one kidney, two kidneys. It's nice when it does have it listed as one or two. So anything that's in a parentheses, especially if it's a CPT code descriptor that has a parentheses, like this one for the 90075, I'll highlight that. I don't do what's after the semicolon or whatever um, like others teach, but I do it a little different. It's because I find these words most often in the CPC exam question, and it's more helpful for the exam questions than what's after the semicolon. The semicolon stuff is more for coding. Um, like if you were in the real world and you needed to code, but because we get the answers um, in our exam questions, we're not having to code. So I find this method better. Another thing that I like to mark is in blue, like for this code right here, um, 50080. When it includes, the CPT code descriptor says anything about including image guidance, I mark it up with a blue star. That way I know I'm not going to add anything from the radiology department. That's helpful. You can see here that I figured out that this one was a unilateral procedure and that if it is bilateral and I'm doing both sides, I went on and added if bilateral, add 50. You find that info usually up here in this coding section. See right up in here? It'll tell you um, if it's unilateral, if it's bilateral, and if you need to add something. Or it's in a parenthetical that's underneath one of the codes. Or you find it out from um, practicing exam questions. But... Either way, we look for that kind of stuff. Um, of course, I mark my do nots with the red. I know somebody was on my Facebook complaining, saying they, they thought it was a bunch of crap that I tell them to go through the entire book and put the red star and red underline all the do nots. But they did the process because they believed in what everybody was saying, that if you follow what Jen says, you will pass. So they reluctantly started doing it. But then when they started doing the practice exam questions, they automatically looked for the do nots when they hadn't before trying to do and pass the exam um, before without my process. And they realized that just going through the whole book and underlining and red starring all those made them unconsciously start looking for them when they're doing practice exam questions, which was is the whole point, is to help you remember to do that. Because otherwise, you don't remember to do that. Of course, if there's a bilateral or a radiology note in a parenthetical, I do those in blue stars. If it tells me to use a code with another code um, in a parenthetical, I'll mark those in green, green for go. If a procedure is open, um, mostly for muscular skeletal, but if a CPT code descriptor says it is an open procedure, I mark those in green, right? And then if it's closed procedure, I mark them in orange. Closed means kind of like stop. So instead of doing it in red, I do it in orange. But you'll find those in the CPT code descriptor. Another thing is if a descriptor, and I mean the words that are coming after the CPT code, says it is without anything, I draw a line through without. So without whatever it is. 
I'm not sure if your ology has a lot of those, but we'll look real quick, including with these bench marks, these back benches. That means that they um, got paid for coordinating the um, transplant. So there's a lot of paperwork. You know, you got to talk to the recipient and the donor, whether they're alive or passed away or uh, all that paperwork. That's that's what the back bench leads to is all that stuff. Pays for all that stuff. Ooh, there's something to highlight that I didn't highlight. Via snare capture. That will be in the practice or the regular exam question for sure. Look right here. It says without use of cystoscope. Right there. That's what I mean. I don't want to see the word cystoscope with this one because it's without it. So I'm going to draw one line through that word. That way I know it doesn't include it. This one also does not have the use of a cystoscope. I think that's helpful because normally if I'm looking at this code, I would see the word cystoscope. And if I was thinking about a code that did include a cystoscope, I might associate this with cystoscope because the cystoscope is so close to the CPT code. And I might miss the fact that it says without over here. So that's why the book prep is handy. You get rid of anything that's in your way that you don't need to have there. Where's my highlight? Yeah, they'll definitely say snare in the exam question if they're going to do it. And then we've got our blue for our radiology is included. You will have one of those questions where they'll have this code with a 7000 code. And all you got to do is to go to your main code, which is this code, and see if it already includes radiology or not. You'll know right away what the answer is. Marking those up ahead of time is super handy dandy. Yeah, this one includes your supervision and interpretation and fluoroscope. It's all included, which is handy dandy. And then we can be internal or external stint. It does not matter. And then my one word difference for this, of course, is remove stint via, via cath, via cath. When you have several removals in a row like this, these all three of these are all removals. You know, if one was a an implant, the other one was a redo, and the other one was a removal, you wouldn't need to do the one word differences. But because all of these are all removals, that's why I go in here and do my differences. So this is a removal. Five oh three. So we're doing a removal of an indwelling, and then the other one is urethra. What kind of urethra stent? This one has dwelling, internal, internal removal stent, stent via. Trans urethra via trans without cystoscope, including radiology and report. What is our two differences? 50386 and 85. See what I wrote down last year. 8685. And eighths. Okay. Transurethra removal only. Oh, yeah. All 
All right, this one is removal and replace. We could probably trim that down some, but. And then the other one is without the replace. It has no replace on it. We are just removal only. Ooh. I can't see where my fingers go because I can't see my keyboard. So I have the, all the microphones and stuff. Removal only. So. Removal only. And then the 87, of course, is external. Is it only external? It is external. Need to mark that up. We've got a modifier alert. We'll mark that up in blue, of course, because these procedures are unilateral. Oh, Grandma's in the house. I just heard my mom sneeze. <laughs> Eighty four is also with the via snare. What is the three? Eighty four. Eighty four is percutaneous, right? Which way? Yep, we're percutaneous. That's going to be our different. Is the approach is different than the catheter? Yep, 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 yep. Then we can do and this one also does not in include the Re, redo, re put in. And this one's percutaneous too, but it includes the replace. Sent, remove, and re. Oh. can't make up my mind if I want to do all caps or if I don't or do <laughs> I need to be consistent whatever I'm doing but and this one's just the removal only but going through and marking these up ahead of time super handy when they're all saying the same thing super handy I do kind of keep up with what my mom and parent child codes are by just kind of semi them together sort of whatever but I don't use a lot of ink and boxing and things I don't think it's very helpful our differences are artery Ooh, I need to do that one in red no 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 that's arterial everything with arteries is always red, right? We got red marks for arteries. And then this one's your urethra. We'll do that in green or yellow. I don't know. Urine, urine color. <laughs> but that's our difference of those two. Allograft means that you're grafting from a donor. 
somebody walked somebody else's body part to you. I think the two L's look like legs. So, but this is a Venus. So right there, we're going to circle that one in blue. So if we had Venus amostasis, we're going to be 27. If it's arterial, we're going to be in the 28. And then if it's just urethra, we'll be in the 29. And really, you don't have to write any one differences if you've got them all done. And of course, you know, I circle my eaches because that means if we did multiple, we can times all of these codes. We wouldn't add the um, modifiers to these. You can do times two, times three, or whatever if they needed it, but I doubt it. Those are all eaches. Does that help you with your question about the um, how to book prep? That gives you plenty of homework to do for sure. Oh, don't forget to fix the out of code sequencing throughout the entire book. And of course, the very last out of code sequence that you cannot find in the medicine section is up in the E&M section. So all these codes that are marked with red you need to go find where they're located at and just put a page number down. I also put down which column number there are, like one or two, but you don't have to do that. But just at least put the page number down. I also, when I do find them and I do mark them and put their page number down, I underline them in red so that I can find them later on. But that is super helpful because there's nothing worse than getting codes on an exam and then you can't find them. And then you have to come look at a sequence of codes. Some of them can be 80 pages away. Some of them can be 700 pages away. Um, fixing that will help you out a whole bunch. Um... This parent starts out with renal endoscope. If the next one starts out with renal endoscope, well, then you better go find out what the two differences are on those. Because knowing that is going to be, and knowing it super fast, is how you pass the exam. Both those start out with the same first two words. Since they do that, go code word by word, figure out what your difference is, and then write it there. Super helpful. Super helpful. Yep, 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 yep. Lipotripsy. It's probably the only lipotripsy, so you don't have to put anything down beside that one. It's the only code that is a lipotripsy. But we've got two ablations, so you better figure out what your one difference is between those and write something down. That will save you. Uh, this 05 and this 00 start out with the same word. So go write down the differences. This one's different. This biopsy is totally different. So there's no other code around it that has the same word. So you're okay to leave that one by itself. It won't need any updating. So that's, that's how you do that throughout the entire section. Oh, hello, Sass. How's it going? Good to see you. I got 20 subscribers left on TikTok, guys. Super happy. I really appreciate you guys. Tomorrow or Wednesday, I get a deposit from you guys, and that'll be $50, and we can do some YouTube subscriptions for that. So that's going to be super helpful. Thanks to the TikTokers who subscribe. All right, my other question was about... Ma's surgeries that we had somebody was asking about so let me go if I can find an ebook there we go Ma's surgeries are in Antigmatary surgeries yeah gotta get out of the guidelines because they have their own set of guidelines and those codes are 
what, so, uh, 17, they have 17 in them somewhere. One seven. Here we go, one seven three one four. So our Mo surgery, Ma surgery, however you say it. So the first thing you got to know in the Mo's is am I 11 or am I 13? And those two codes are simply just body parts. And that's the first thing you search those questions for. And the 13 is the easier one because it only does trunk, arm, and legs right there. Super easy. If it's not there, if it's not a trunk, arm, or leg, if it's hands, feet, genitalia, in the nerves, tendons, vessels, cartilage, and head, neck, everywhere else in the freaking body, it's going to be an 11. So that's the two easy. That's, that's step one. And that's an easy one. So if we go and we're cutting on somebody's arms or legs, then we're always going to code. The very first code is 13. Anything else is going to go on 11. Now, how many times I go back to the body is called stages and cut stuff off. The 11 and 13 are automatically the first stage. If I'm in 11 body part, then I can only code the 12 with it for extra body parts I'm cutting off. If I'm in the body part of 13, then I can only code the 14 for extra times I go back to the body and cut extra things off. So if I only go to the body and I cut off one block and cut it into slices that go on a microscope and send it off, then I don't need the 14. But if I go back to the body and cut more pieces off a second time, then I'll need my 14. And then if either one of the stages, either the 13 or the 14 or the 11 or 12, if I cut them up into little pieces and put them on slides on the microscope and any of those numbers are bigger than the number five by not adding, you don't add in Ma's, then I will add 15 and 15 can go with any of them. It's universal. So we can go to a Word document real quick and I can show you. Uh, right here. So Okay. We have a Ma's surgery on somebody's nose. We're going to have three stages. Stage 1 equals four, stage two equals three, stage three equals two. What's our answer going to be? So first off, step one is Am I doing a number 11 or a 13, which is just our body part, right? Where does the nose fit in? Does the nose go with an 11 or a 13? Okay. 
I don't know if anybody's listening. Thanks, MK. Would love to see what's going on. Okay, let's see. I see Michelle's question in here. I saw her asking one the other time, but I didn't have what stage one was, so it was hard to answer if it was stage one. See, here's my mom's question. On the left arm... With a total of seven blocks, second stage and third stage. We don't add anything. I have to know the specific numbers of which ones. How many are in each stage? Because you can't add the stages. So nose is going to be 11. So we're going to be 17, 3, 11. Because we had multiple stages, we get to add... The 17, 3, 12, an extra stage, we get to do times 2, because this does 2, this does 1, so that equals all three stages. And that is our answer for the one that I did, because none of them equal up to 5 on their own. We're okay, because each one of these, number 11, will do 5, but we only did 4. This one goes with that one. This one goes with the first 12. It will do 5. We only did 3, so we're good. If we did this one, it goes with the number 2, and we only did 3 or 2, and that's less than 5, so we're good. So anyway, our answer is just the 11 with the 12 on this one. Now her question was, I just need to know. Let me see if I can find the question. In its entirety. Google is a fabulous place. That's the regular one. I don't think that's the question she has. I think maybe ref farm map coloring five three. That one might be it. Let's grab this one and see if that's her question. So for this one, we have to figure out. Hi, Renee. I see you later. I've got E&M questions coming up, so watch the replay tomorrow. Our, we're in the arms, so we know right away we're going to get rid of the 11s. Right? 
and then 58 modifier doesn't go anywhere in MOZ, so we know our answer is C, but to figure that out and know why, like I said, that this three stages, if you had three stages, it's going to look like that. It's going to have your 14 or your 12 times 2 because your 13 is one stage. This is two more stages, so that's three stages. And then we just need to know if any of those stages are bigger than the number five. Our first stage has five blocks in it, seven blocks in our second stage. That is over, so we will need our 15. And the reason it's times two is because that's how many is after, if we take 7 and we minus 5 away from it, we get 2 left over. That's why we have the times 2. And then our third block had, our third stage only had 3 blocks. So nothing we needed to do with it. So our 1, 7, 3, 1, 3. Our first block had five in it, perfectly fine, had five blocks in it, perfect. Now our, if you're in a HEMA, they like to code like this. They would do this one, then they would do And then they would do three, one, five. Leslie Jones has become a member. Thank you, Leslie. Second stage had how many blocks? Seven blocks. Okay, seven. This will only do five. That's a stage. This will only do five. So we have to take that away. That means we got two remainder. Two remainder goes over here. And then our third stage had three blocks in it. And this will do up to five. So we're good there. Now, if our third stage wasn't three blocks, what if it was six blocks? This would leave one remainder, and we would add it to the, our 15, and our 15 would turn into times three. If our first block also was a six, we would have another remainder because it only does five and we would add that over here and that would change into a four. We can get all kinds of fancy here. <laughs> But does that help any at all, or am I going too fast? Seven is in the second stage. Mm hmm Does that help? I hope that helps. Trying to catch up with your chat. MK sharing all kinds of information. Who said they passed? I probably missed everybody saying all kinds of stuff. I have Dramamine in the system, so I'm like really 
focused because I got nauseous today at noon and I had to dope myself up. I don't know why. But now I'm like, I can't multitask when I'm on it. And I just chew just a tiny little piece of it off. So I'm doing a terrible job of multitasking and paying attention to chat tonight. Sorry. Thank you, Leslie. I hope that helps. So the question is flawed and it should be 315 times. No, actually, the question is correct. The original way it was written, I just changed, um, was giving you some more examples um, just in case. But so the question, the way it is written, for sure. Okay, three. Four. Okay. So first stage has five blocks in it. So it's perfect the way it is. This one has seven. So we have two remainder. The third, three. We don't have anything remainder. Nothing remainder here. So that means our 15 is times two because we only had the two remainder. So that is our answer. The Ahima way or... C, if you do it AAPC-wise, where you do the times 2 on the 14. Yep, yep, yep. Question's correct. It's just I started adding more stuff and playing around with it. Diva passed. Oh, congratulations. I want to see MK get her CPMA or her CRC2 or COC or maybe even cardiology specialty. Oh, Twinkle's giving away some subscriptions. All right. Y'all want to see the rest of the questions I had for tonight? So here's a COVID question I found. In some of my news articles recently, so a patient comes in for follow-up for one month after testing positive with COVID. The patient no longer is testing positive for COVID, but still suffers from some symptoms. How do you code it? Do we code our U07 as primary and then list the symptoms? Do we use a history of like Z09? Do we use the U09 followed by specific symptoms, or do we use the symptom codes followed by the U09? What do you think, guys? Diana's working on her COC and CRC. It's a good combination. You want to work in that highfalutin hospital coding. I hope you pass. It's normal to be scared. It's perfectly normal. Just hang in there. You got it. Ooh, I only have one person on TikTok. Wow. I miss my TikTok people, but I hopefully the YouTube uh, screening is getting a lot better. Because I know nobody can see through a cell phone to another screen. It's really a terrible way to try to teach from. <laughs> Anybody want to take a guess on this question? It's a guideline question. I would look for similarities in the answers. And since I have, there's my highlighter. I have this one has the U09, this one has the U09 in it. Those two answers, C and D, have similarities. I just need to know, will symptoms go first or last? Because A and B 
have totally different answers. They got J codes and U's and then Z codes. So remember to look for similarities even when you don't think it's feasible because Good, I'm so glad. Hopefully this will be helpful. TikTok's not working at all. I didn't think so. With only one person there, it must not be working tonight. That's so weird. Switch out the internet and see if it goes. I have two Wi-Fi networks, but it's only going to the sudden drop. It's not going to the other one. I don't know what's wrong with it. Michelle and Chloe have it right. We are going to do symptoms first. Yep. C is your answer. Perfect. Oh, D. Sorry. Did I put it wrong? Yes, I meant to say. <laughs> I said symptoms first, didn't I? But I picked the wrong answer. It's D. Symptoms first. Sorry. I knew what I was saying, but I was picking the wrong thing. I'm telling you that Dramamine, just chewing a tiny little piece of a corner off, keeps me unfocused. But it was either this or not be able to sit up at all. Gotta get my eyes checked and get new glasses so I'm not dizzy. Gotta find some time. Gotta take a cat to the vet tomorrow. All right. True or false? When reporting for office outpatient E&M visits, either new or established, and we're gonna add some codes from the back of the book, which is 96112 or 113, is it necessary to include time and effort used to conduct, interpret, and document behavioral or emotional screening accurately to calculate the level of medical decision making for an office outpatient visit? The first thing you got to do is figure out we know what E and M codes stand for, and we can go without that, but we better go look up these medicine codes, right? See what the heck they are. Where is my, gonna go here, yeah, here. And we're gonna go look up those codes. And see what they are. What is a 96112 code? Ooh, I found it in a chart. Developmental Behavioral Screening Test. Do I have a code with a code description? Yep. Developmental Test Administration, including assessment, fine gross, blah, blah, blah. Of course, what you're going to highlight is all this. Based off that descriptor, is it necessary to include the time and effort used to conduct and interpret and document the behavioral and emotional screening to accurately calculate the MDM for the office visit based off that descriptor? What do you guys think, true or false? This was also in a recent magazine article, I believe AAPC wrote in their knowledge center somewhere. I got one brave soul who answered it. TikTok's not working, it's just thinking. Ugh. 
Thank you for the love hearts, finger hearts. Sassy was contributing hearts. That's awesome. I missed her. Okay, if the code, but it's asking you if you need it to calculate your MDM. Those codes won't have MDM. Only these codes have MDM. These codes are based off time, 30 minutes, but the answer is false. And let's read some of the stuff that's going to go along with this. Um, it says before reporting a 96112, we have to verify the supporting document, including the test and interpretation score. The provider uses a standard test or tool score to report the patients. It's like a questionnaire thing. You must also review the results with the patient and the family members. They have to keep a copy of that questionnaire in the record. Also, when you report 96112 in conjunction with an E&M service, you do not count the time or effort to prepare the developmental test towards the key components of your history, physical, and MDM or time for selecting an appropriate E&M code. You can append a 51, 59 modifier to the second code, which is that 96112, to differentiate that you did two separate E&M services. And if you did like an hour-long assessment on that patient for the 962, no, 96112, you can add in the extra add-on code at the end. But the way they wrote the question didn't make it seem like They were asking if you are documented, documenting the time and effort. As specifically as they do in the answer that they gave us, it's more clear in that answer, I thought, than it was in the way they wrote the question. Is it necessary to include the time and effort used to conduct and interpret the document. And they say it is not. Do not count the time and effort. A lot of times those questionnaires are filled out by the family members or the child themselves or their medical assistant asks the questions and fills them out. That may have something to do with this particular item since it is a questionnaire, but in our question, did they even say it was a questionnaire? They said an emotional screening, but they didn't say it was a questionnaire. So it's vague at best to even know you would have to be a medical assistant or know something about how these are done. Um, that the patient usually fills them out, or we send them home and the parent takes them to school and has one of their teachers fills it out, and then the parents fill one out. We can't count that time towards an MDM, is what they mean. Very tricky question, but the answer is false. It was just a true or false question. And then the first question that we did have, the answer was D. Symptoms go first. For the COVID question, symptoms go first with the history of COVID as our secondary code.
All right, ICD-10-1. What do you guys see with this one, with the process of elimination? Yeah, that's what somebody's been saying, is that the TikTok's been freezing. Let me see if I can't end it and start it again. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. I had one gifter. And I do follow y'all back on TikTok, too. It tells me who the top 10 people were watching and all that stuff. And I do try to follow you guys back. If you'll let me. Some of you got on protection stuff that won't let me follow you. Okay. Starting it over again and see if it'll help. You like C or D? Well, what I see is we have K95 or 25, K25 in three answers. C looks, looks abnormal to me because it doesn't have a K25 in it, but... We also have two similarities, of course, with the C and D, but what I would do is look up my K and look up my R10, just simply R10, just to see if I can figure out if I'm in the right spot or not. Do I need an extra code? Do I not need an extra code? What's going on here? A, B, C, D, E, F, H, I, J, and then K. What is that K25? I'm interested in it because it's written down three times. So, I'm like, what is that? K25 is gastric ulcer. What is my R10 is just going to be a symptom. So, do we... Do we need a symptom if we have a diagnosis of ulcer? Also notes a gastric ulcer. It's still loading and lagging. That's terrible. Thank you for the finger heart, Sass. I don't know what's going on with Tiki Talk. Nope. So what do you think the answer is going to be? Yep. A all by itself. Perfect. Good job. A patient's medical record shows a history of rheumatoid arthritis. The MD's note mentions immunosuppression. Which of the following statements is true? You can never code M06 with D89. Immunosuppress is bundled into MO6. Both conditions can be coded using those codes. Or immunosuppression is bundled with MO6. So that's probably a guideline. That's going to be a guideline. I really like the fact that they moved 
the guidelines in the ICD-10 book for this year. But then again, I've got 13 million sections to write the guidelines three and four times <laughs> in our ICD-10 book. For 2022, I mean, not 2023. Instead of it all being up in the G's, now we've got a little bit of snippets of some of those guidelines written in the front of each one of those diagnosis code sections. Sorry, cowgirl. There you go. Good night, Gupta. Good to see you. I'm sorry it's so late. I got some E&M questions, so you can start off your morning makeup or whatever routine breakfast and watch those in the morning. Have a good night. About the T36. Girl, you're going to have to write me all these out, MK. How am I going to find them in chat? I haven't been paying attention to chat. You're killing me. I'm seeing you write all this good stuff. Immunosuppression is bundled with M06, therefore only M06 should be used. Sounds like something that AAPC would do, especially since remember how our symptoms are um, bundled into our gastric. C, we're going to actually do both conditions. Immunosuppression is different than, what was our D? Our D is going to be our rheumatoid arthritis and then our immunosuppression. Yeah. Arthritis isn't caused by an immune response. It's caused by degeneration, overuse, or injury. So we're just going to code them both. According to the ICD-10 guidelines, so we're just simply looking for one that is correct, is the condition or nature of a sequela is sequenced first and the sequela code is sequenced second with the seventh character being S tracked into the injury code like burns. Sequela code is sequenced first and the condition or the nature of the sequela is sequenced second and the second and the seventh character S is tracked to the injury code burn. So the differences here was the condition or nature. This one's the sequela code. This one again is condition or nature. And then this one's con sequela. So probably separating them out with little differences will help out a whole bunch. We've got two S's. And then we've got two D's. So being able to figure out what the differences are in these and separating them out. I, is sequela D's or S's? Sequela is going to be an S, right? So we can get rid of 
these two. So we just need to know, is it the condition or nature or the sequela code that is coded first? That makes it dear. Good night. Yep, it's going to be the condition. It's going to go first. And then the sequela code. All right, E&M. Or procedure. What are we doing for this question? 99213 is an established level three office visit. This one is also a level three. This is a level two. We have modifiers we can think about that might help. We have a procedure that's in two answers. When I'm looking for similarities, I have two E and M's that look like similarities, so that 12 looks out of place. I would probably get rid of D and not think about it yet. And it would be a difference between A, B, or C. I think Heather got it, has it right. What was the patient scheduled for? Were they scheduled? And did they have a history, an exam, and an MDM done so that you can bill for that or your components, your three elements now, where we discuss the, um, the problem we talk about the risk features and stuff that were reviewed. Did we do any of that? To we didn't have an MDM, then we can't bill for an MDM. So our answer has to be just the procedure. That's all they came in for. There was no decision. We just did a procedure. Don't forget that. You'll probably have one like that on the exam. If they're giving you just a procedure code in the muscular skeletal system and then throwing in a bunch of E&M codes on other answers, there's usually a reason for it. Go look and see why they came in today. If it's just for procedure, only code the procedure. All right, this one's got two answers. So we either have an, a modifier answer, and we also have an MDM answer. What do you think the answer is for this one? We have a patient who is seen by an MD to obtain a release to go back to work. The MD stated that the patient is not cleared to go back to work. So the health insurance company, Workman's Comp, Request a second opinion from a different physician because they really want that patient to go back to work. So what modifier is going to be used and what code is that second opinion physician going to use for that office visit? We have two new patient office visit codes and we have two office consultation codes. And then we have some modifiers. Good job, go kart procedure only. Yep, what's our modifier for mandated service? It is our 32, perfect. And then that mandated service goes to the specialist or the second opinion physician. And then they cannot bill for a consultation because we don't have 
an MD to an MD request. So it has to be one of these. It could be a level two, it could be a level three. We don't really have enough information. Assuming most likely it is a B, but we really don't have enough information. I wrote the second part of this question. I was just curious. Um, but the original question only came with the modifiers. Okay, we got procedures and then we got ENMs. We got the procedure is in every single one of the answers. And then we have modifiers listed twice. So we need to know our patient's status. Are they somewhere getting an evaluation with our elements where the problem was looked at, where tests were ordered or reviewed, and then risk was assessed if we're going to bill an ENM? Or did they just get a procedure done? And do we need to add any modifiers? Let me talk to Travis real quick. Travis, you're being loud and distracting. Uh, yes, you are. Please stop. Like, stop being distracting. What? Travis? He's not loud. Camera is on. Do not turn off YouTube again. Because we were grounded for the rain. Hey, Lester, Lester. My cats are starting to circle. They're wanting some dinner. What do you guys think on this one? ER, did they get evaluated? They did have an exam was performed. They ordered a CBC. We do have a high MDM. A decision was made. So we can get rid of A and B. Now we just need to know, are we going to use a 25 modifier or a 57? What is our 57 modifier? That is a decision for surgery. Was there going to be a surgery? Proceed with appendectomy. Yep. So we're going to pick B. D. God, I'm saying the wrong numbers and letters today. Terribly. Sorry, guys. Another modifier. Patient had bunion surgery. Patient fell and tripped. Went back to the same orthopedist. What, what modifier would we use in this scenario? None, 25, 57, or 24? Okay, hey, where is Bunyan's? Thanks, Joanna. Where is a Bunyan? Where is a Bunyan? That's on the foot, right? That's where their surgery was done at. But in February, the patient tripped and landed on an arm. They might have been seen by the same doctor. 
but they're being seen this time for arm pain. Does that have anything to do with the foot pain? <laughs> so is there any reason to have a modifier? Probably if we're still seeing an orthopedist and it's during the post-op period during another procedure, we're still within, you know, if this was a really bad bunion surgery, maybe it has a 60-day uh, global period. And so if the patient's coming back in to be seen by something else, we actually have a modifier for that, which is... R24, which is our unrelated, right? That's to let the insurance company know we're seeing Miss So and so again, but we're seeing her for a different orthopedic issue this time. So this is not global. You're going to have to pay me for this visit because it's not of her foot. So D is going to be your answer. Post-op period, yes. Globalization, be sure and Google that. Global, global surgeries, do some research on it. You can uh, join my Discord group. We'll probably got tons of information about that. Some surgeries only have a global period of the day of the surgery. Some of them have 30 days. Some of them have 60, some of them have 90 days, and some of them are nine months plus, you know, like OB and delivery. Nobody gets paid for anything in pregnancy. Each time you come to see the OB doctor to get your monthly weight checks and fundal heights and all that stuff and the ultrasounds and... All that, no one gets paid at all. It's all global until they deliver the baby and you actually come back and get your six-week post-op after you deliver the baby. Then they bill one CPT code for all of that 10 months worth of care. And that's when they get paid for all that. They don't get paid for nothing until then. So global surgeries... You might get one question on that one, too. I'm sorry YouTube kicked you out. How do you know by practice? Practicing these practice questions over and over again, you'll eventually learn the guidelines that are written in your CPT book, if you're in the 2022 book, um, your surgery guidelines start on page 88. Let me look in your 2023. In your 2023, your surgery guidelines. In 2023 are going to be on page 72. They start out there, and there is a CPT surgical package definition right there. So that starts out your training, but it's highfalutin words that don't explain stuff very well. But you keep reading those guidelines, keep practicing these questions, you'll be able to recognize them. Kitty cats, my kitty cats. Come on, Lester, you're gonna have to stop and be good. What time is it? We got 15 more minutes. You be good, buddy. You hear him scratching his cat tree right now in frustration. <laughs> little, little man, you can wait 15 more minutes. Time did not change for you guys. All right, we've got three 
that are in the same E and M visit. Then we have just a procedure. So let's go to our last sentence. Is that it? We don't have anything. Okay. Did we do an evaluation on this patient? Did we do and assess their problems? Did we review outside testing? Did we do a risk assessment on this patient? If we didn't, then we can only bill the 206. If we did, then we can bill A, B, or C. So I can see some exam, eyes, muscular, skeletal, cardiovascular. That all means we, we, we saw the patient and we did an office visit. So I know D is not going to be the right answer, right? We didn't just pop them in and do a procedure and pop them out the door. We actually looked at lots of body parts. So we know the answer is going to at least be A, B, or C. I'll let you guys decide whether you think we get to bill for a procedure or not, and if we're going to bill for a modifier with this one. What do you guys think? What is our 32? No, 23? We've got a 25 modifier, which is significant separate identifiable evaluation and management modifier, and our 57 is decision for surgery. There was a procedure done here. Now we looked at their eyes, their cardiovascular, their skin. Does that have anything to do? Nope. Separate, identifiable. We may have aspirated or drawn some fluid off the knee. We get to bill for that if we wanted to, right? We got some x-rays done. If we had x-rays in the office, we could bill for that, whatever that code was. We're going to recommend that the patient follow up in 10 days. They just wrapped a bandage the knee up. So do we get to bill for an office visit and the procedure? Or just the office visit? It's a lot of work that goes into a sterile technique and drawing fluid off of a joint that takes a it's not like I'm doing steri strips that are included in an E&M visit even stitches can be billed you know um, single layer or complex layer the only thing that's included in an E&M visit would be like steri strips or removing stitches. But we drained the knee and pulled out some fluid and we're sending it off to culture. The setup, the prep and technique and the expertise to stick a needle into somebody's knee and not mess up their joint is billable. You can bill for both. A was your answer. The injection was not really like an injection. We stuck a needle in there and we aspirated. We drew fluid out. 
we aspirated. We did do local anesthetic. That's included in the procedure. Um, that's the lidocaine. We don't bill for that separately, but we do get to bill for the aspiration, drawing those fluids out. And that's for the office visit. Rapid fire, got some anatomy of the following. Which radiographic recording is of the liver? Yeah. Stary strips are about the only thing I can think of right now, or removal of sutures or staples. Anything else we're going to bill for. If we do an ingrown toenail, if we do anything else, we're going to bill for it. I like to look for the radiography and just my, my um, suffix. Plasty is a repair. Otomy is like removal. Manipulation, that ain't that is not a radiograph. The only thing that's a graph is the graphy. So sometimes even if the beginner words don't help you, don't forget about your suffixes at the end. Match those two up. Yeah, we got C. Good job. Oh yeah, this was a good one. Are we going to do a regular office visit for this one? Does anybody know where the 93792 code is? This one, 99471, is a hospital code. These are medicine codes in the back of the book. How would you report initial 90 days of therapy, including eight INR measurements? Ooh. My cats are legitimately beating each other up through the door. <laughs> one's on one side of my bedroom door and the other one's on the other side. They're fighting over... It's dinner time. She's not feeding us. Wow. Let's go look up our code in our ebook. Because I know what the other ones are. I just don't know what this one's for. Ooh, it's got lots of guidelines with it because it's mentioned everywhere. All right. Do not report. Do not report. Do not do, do not do. Lots of do nots. We've got patient caregiver training, home, INR, monitoring. Very cool code. Any header we need to know about and guidelines. Now, when the patient comes into the doctor's office and they discussed, let's see, the patient is being managed on an outpatient basis. MD continues to review the patient's test results, gives patients instructions, dosaging adjustments, orders additional tests. How do we report the initial 90 days of therapy for including eight INR measurements.
we did a lot of this in the doctor's office, but this was a long time ago. I'm talking 1996 when I was externing office, hospital, labor, and delivery all over the places. Psych, ward, every everything. And I remember doing a bunch of INRs but, and managing patients, but I thought we were billing office visits. But a lot's probably changed in the CPT code since 1996. I don't know what they were billing. 90 day does sound global. So you think it's a code all by itself? This is a hospital code, and I think it's for like a pediatric patient, isn't it? To 24-year-month-olds or something, I don't know. Two to four-year-old or something, I don't know. That looks like an OB. That's one of my baby codes for NICU. And there's no indication that anybody on warfarin therapy is a baby. That would be unlikely. That's for atrial fibrillation. So I doubt anything's B. So either is it bundled in a regular office visit or do we get to build a global code? Google it, Sylvester. INR. INR is for your Coumadin or Warfarin therapy. It's all the same thing. You are looking for your um, blood rate of clotting for a patient. In atrial fibrillation, your heart is having to work harder to pump blood through. So what we do is we thin the blood and make it thinner so it's easier for the heart to pump and we don't stress the heart out. There's a fine line, though, because every time you cut a little old lady or, or a little old guy, they don't stop bleeding. They just bleed everywhere, and they could just, and their skin gets so paper thin, and they could bleed out just by eating popcorn, just because the popcorn kernel goes through their skin and then into their colon and then out their intestines. Don't ever let your senior citizens eat peanuts or popcorn anymore because it's really bad for them. A tiny little bleed from a kernel of a shell can have them bleeding out and and um, they wouldn't know they were anemic. But anyway, that's what INR stands for. We test their blood to see how quick, because we thin it out, they don't have as many blood clotting factors in their blood and they don't stop bleeding um, as fast because of this. So we have to continually check this. And because insurance plans make us give them generic drugs, the stability of the generic drugs makes their labs fluctuate greatly too. The name brand drugs do a better job of keeping their INR steady. But the generics, I don't know why, they're, just the way they're manufactured um, seem to give various results on that, too. Anyway, anytime they mention anything in a practice question or in a certification exam question that says 10 days, 30 days, 90 days, you know it's a global issue, and you're only looking for one code, one answer. So you know your answer is going to be just the one. We're not going to bill any office visits for that. It's a global issue. It was A. Some more rapid fire anatomy. A bone that may develop in a tendon is called what? These are the kind of tricky questions they ask you on the exam. I assume. Uh, 
<laughs> You're going to miss it when you pass. Y'all are going to um, have withdrawals. You have to come back and get another certification. I don't know what I'm going to do. I know I got people asking me for COCs and CRC help and CPMA. <sighs> yep, sesamoid bone. Think about your knee joint and that sesamoid bone sitting up on top and it's right between two tendons holding it in place. The humerus is an example of what type of bone? Flat, irregular, short, or long? Yes, yes. When is everybody taking their test? No way. No way. This takes too long. Long bone. Complete the series. Frontal lobe. Parental lobe. Temporal lobe. And then which lobe after that? I throw a lot of COC questions in here, but yes, I will do some more. I've already done all my CEUs for two years. I've got way too many already done. I've already done more than what I need. And my CEUs don't need to be done until August of this year. So CEUs aren't too bad of a problem if I had an extra certificate. COSC. I'd like to have the speciality in E&M. Because I refused to learn it for my CPC, so I never did know it. Now I know it pretty well, so that seems like that would be a really easy certificate to go for. As far as the second one to have. Not that I need any of them, but it's fun to have the initials, I guess, added to you. Optical. Upon leaving the stomach, nutrients move through the small intestines in what order? Are we doing the J's first or the D's first? This is why it's so handy to do the um, anatomy. <laughs> DC trunk, dang it. I have their E&M course and that documentation specialist course too. The um, CEMC certification, I bet I could take that one and pass. And then the documentation specialist, I bet I could take that one too and pass, but don't need it for my auditing. The answer is C. You are correct. Good job. Good job. What about this one? This inflammation affects what si system? Digestive, nervous, urinary, or cardiovascular? depends on where you're wanting to work and what your job speciality is wanting to lean towards. What's your favorite? You're pretty good at cardiovascular, picking out the different veins and routes and 
Very technical. Don't you have some family members that are doctors? Where's your career going? Where are you wanting to work? Are you wanting to bill for your family members? What's their speciality? What do you want to do when you grow up? <laughs> do you want to be an auditor? Do you want to be a documentation specialist? Do you want to learn E&M? What do you want? Would you like to do pharmacy or heat us measures? There's so many options. Do you want to do ambulances? Do you want to do outpatient surgeries? Are you curious about cancer and chemotherapy coding? What, are you worried about DMEs and want to specialize in casting supplies or orthopedics? Or There's so many different things. What are you curious about? A lot of people go into the medical field because they had somebody pass away and they want to give back to that area, you know, you never know. Which CPT code set is used voluntarily by physicians to report quality patient performance measures? Category one, two, three, or unlisted codes? Outpatient surgeries. Then that's a COC. Or some of their speciality stuff. You want to learn everything. You can learn everything. I love auditing. I think this is what she says. I like to pick mistakes. I do too. I love finding mistakes. Peds for Children's Hospital. That's awesome. One of my best friends is a Peds cardiac, cardiac nurse. Y'all are all saying C? It's B, Category 2 codes, my loves. That's where all the HEDIS measures and stuff like that. Those are all the voluntary codes. Like the blood pressure codes, 3 something 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 f I don't know, forget them, whatever they are. Yes, you are. You're way over detail-oriented. Yes, you're very good at that. What does a non-facility describe when calculating Medicare physician fee schedule payments? You just bump your salary by at least 10K a year by having two certificates. So, I mean, that's almost an extra $1,000 a month by having two certificates. So, kind of kind of handy dandy. Um, where am I at? If I go here, can I go also... To there, I don't know where I'm at. Yep, I was there on Quizlet. Um, APC. So that page is probably not the best. Let me go here and see if I can't go there and go. Yep, there. Now you can see it better. So if we go. See all these specialities? You won't be able to see them all on YouTube, but there's so much that general surgery would be cool too. The CGSC, um, MK, the COC has like a lot of laws instead of like coding, coding stuff. Oops, where am I going to? Um, if you're really into just coding, 
The Cardiology CCC is pretty cool. So is the CCVTC, because that throws in your Appendix L. Um, the General Surgery CG, it's over here at that end. The CGSC, it's really cool. The PEDS person right here, they have their own practice exam questions too. So like if you go into one of these, eventually get there. Yep, 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 yep. They of course have a course they'll, they'll wanna send you, but you don't need it. All you need is their practice exam questions for that. So let me see. And figure out where that is on this lovely page. They they don't make it easy to find where you can buy them separately. Yep, 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 yep. Right there. And then I just want to go in to find the hmm. They don't make it easy. Be nice if you could find stuff easily. No, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Go here. Okay, okay, okay. Practice exams. We'll go there. But then you go into the speciality tab right there, which is far over here to the side. Then you pick out which one so that Cardiovascular with the Appendix L, you can buy those practice exam questions right there. It's $39 if you're a member. You get 150 questions. The PEDS one, this is the E&M one right there, same thing, 150 questions. The cardiovascular ones are right there, it's $39. Um, there's the PEDS. The PEDS ones are right there. You can get those for 30 bucks. And that's all you need to get any one of these speciality. Um, let me get you guys. Why are they not all showing? I don't know. Oh, they don't show until I pick one. But to pick any one of these specialities, all you need is that 150 practice exam questions right here. Practice those, and then by the attempts to take the exam twice, of course, and try it after you make notes of all your 150 questions in your books, and then try to go get these. These are the smaller, they're not as big as like a COC or a CIC and full of differing information. These are more code based, which is pretty cool. And uh, they still get you the same amount. There's no apprenticeship. Um, you still have cool initials at the end of your of your um, speciality. And you can go and pick any one of them that you really want to go to. This one's family practice. That PEDS person who wanted to be PEDS, you could easily get the FP, the CFP, C, and the PEDS one, the CPEDC. Also, get both of those certificates and have three with the CPC and specialize really coolly in uh, pediatrics with all three of those. But all you need is those practice exam questions to do all those. And then they will show up here in your items of study. So then you can take the practice exam questions here when you get ready to take them. And they're, they're not bad. I haven't done them all yet. There's the peds. 
This is just one case that they have that they'll want you to code for whether it's minimal, low, minimal, low, and then answer some true or false, whether you're straightforward, what your level visit would be, what your diagnosis would be, and that's it. Not bad. And you get the rationale with these. Still, the certification exam is still um, um, A, B, C, D, so easy. Not bad. And these questions are directly related to what will be on the certificate exam. And these are something that a lot of people don't get, but they're worth just as much as getting a COC or something else. Whatever your speciality is that you want to go into, they'll still increase your, your salary because you have two specialities, three specialities. You could get so many. You're really cool to say that you are specialized in family practice or pediatrics. There's the family practice one and the pediatric one. You could do those really easily because if you can already do your E&M, then you're good to go there. If E&M is your struggle and your devil and you hate it and you just want to do general surgery, this is probably easier than the... the uh, COC and it's got more initials looks cooler CG SC hematology and oncology I think MK would be good at that too getting that certificate right there these are cool hmm <laughs> All right, any other questions before I go for the night? We did our urinary bladder. We did a bunch of questions. You guys know where to find everything on YouTube. If y'all need anything, the uh, link to the Discord and all that stuff is way over here on this side. Y'all can't see on this piece of paper, but it's over here. I've got all the links for YouTube. TikTok, all kinds of stuff over here to the side. Uh, we'll do another live on Wednesday, of course, and female reproduction for 2023 is up, and I have urology going now. I just need to... Where did the scan PDFs go? Good Lord. I just got to update them. That's all. Update all the one, one code differences right here. And get this section done. Don't forget to write down what body parts we're working on in this sections on every top of the header page because that will help out more than anything. Knowing whether you're working in a kidney, or in the bladder, or in a urethra, that will save you in this area for sure. Because all of them are scopes. Every single procedure is a scope. You just need to know whether you're in a kidney, in a ureter, or in a bladder. And that'll tell you what part of the book you're supposed to be in to keep you straight and picking the correct answer. Absolutely. Okay, I bought all the available 2023 today. Awesome, Chloe. If you have any issues, let me know. I hope they help a whole bunch. And uh, we'll get working on this urology one. And then I got to do neurology. And I got to get integumentary and muscular skeletal going for our workshop on... This Sunday? Is it coming up this Sunday? Gosh, doc. We're going to do 75 questions on Sunday on integumentary, musculoskeletal, and e &M. So that's a really cool workshop. So busy week this week.
going over on Wednesday? I don't know. Um, probably some more bladder stuff since that's what section I'm working on right here. Um, I don't want to go over integumentary and muscular skeletal since I'm doing it all day Sunday anyway. So any other sections other than those two? You got a suggestion? What would you like to see on Wednesday? Is there anything y'all need or would like to see? Open to suggestions. I hope the YouTube subscriptions are helping you guys out a whole bunch. You can sign up for the workshop up until like one minute before it starts. And if, if there's a need and you want to enter into a raffle to win it um, for free, just email me at medicalcodingbyjen at gmail.com. Put raffle in the header, raffle workshop in the header. And let me know you want to win the workshop. Be sure you have an account already set up on my website because the only way I can get you the link if you do win. Let me look. Is that it? No. I'm trying to see. Where is me? None of that is me. Is that me? That's No, that's not me either. Um, Y'all know my website, the medicalcodingbygen.com. Be sure and already have an account set up there because I can't send you a link if if I don't have you in that system. I'm trying to find it, Lord. It's just not going to go to it. I don't know why. Let's go there. Will this one go to it? There we go. Yep. Be sure you've got an account set up here. And be sure whatever you use is a valid email address that you really do check all the time. Don't use an EDU email. Set up a Gmail or something. Something easy. Something that you can go to and check. Because that's where I send all your stuff. I don't send y'all tons of spam, email you every day with crap, just the important stuff. If you buy something from me, it's going to come to your email. So we have to be able to communicate that way. So be sure and sign up here if you want to win a workshop. Lab and Path, as always, ears and eyes, hernias. Those hernias are all new to the 8,000s. Lab and Path. I did some on Friday night. Did y'all see that live? It was pretty good. I had some difficult ones, and I told you what to write uh, next to each one of the 8,000 codes. They were really good ones. I had to research those. So be sure and look at last Friday night's. See you on Wednesday. I hope this was helpful, guys. Hope you learned lots. Sorry about TikTok not working, but ooh, we got 23 of you on there now. So something worked. Thank you for the 1,000 likes and the share of the live. I really appreciate you guys, and I will see you guys on Wednesday. Eyes and ears. I haven't done those in a while. Lab and Path, 8,000s, E&M as always. You know it, Winters. We'll always do E&M. See you later, Chloe.